for prayer we're going to pray I want to read to you from the book of Matthew it says when you pray do not imitate the hypocrites they love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. It says, but when you pray, go to your private room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. It says that in your prayers do not babble as the pagans do. For they think that by using many words they will make themselves heard. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. Today is a very special day. During this week on our prayer, uh, our morning meetings, it was, it was suggested that we go into fasting for one of our brothers who has 
had this mysterious problem with his speech and the doctors can't tell what's going on. And it's been going on for a while. And so one of our members suggested that this could very well be a spiritual battle because this young man likes to talk about Jesus. And we know that when we start to talk about the goodness of our God, that Satan steps in and he wants to put a halt to this. So today we are going to pray over our brother. And so we're calling for Reggie Jr. I saw him just come in. So Sister Naomi, can you go out there and tell him that we are ready to pray? And I'm asking all of us to put our hearts and minds at the place where we can petition God in sincerity and truth. Because we know that there is nothing too hard for God. We know that Satan tries to stamp his people down. But God has already won the victory. And if we are sincere in our prayers and in what we ask God, he will grant it. He says, for the one who asks always receives. And the one One who knocks will always have the door opened. So we are asking God. We are knocking at the door. We are searching. And God promises that if we do all of these things in sincerity and in truth, he is going to answer. We don't know what's going on with Reggie, but God knows. Yes, yes, he does. And just the same way that he loosed tongues when he walked this earth, he tells us that the same thing that he did and that the disciples did then, we can do it too. We have to put our faith where it needs to be so that we can witness that miracle. I just want to say, this week, somebody sent me something. And I don't like to talk about these things because I don't know how true it is. But I'm going to say it. They showed, the woman showed a picture of a woman who had had her toes removed and the wound would not close up. But she prayed, she prayed the woman sent in to this woman of God and asked for prayer. And the woman prayed and the person sent a picture of her foot closing up. I don't know if this is true, but I know that what God did is true. I know that he healed a man with a withered hand. I know that he made the blind to see. I know that he made the lame to walk. And he promised that if we have that faith, as little as a mustard seed, we are able to do. And so today we are going to pray. Reggie, we're inviting you up here. Amen. And as we um, begin to to pray, one of the purposes of the fasting, um, people think the fasting casts out uh, the demons and such, but what fasting actually is used to remove is the unbelief. 
uh, and it's important uh, that we believe, uh, believe because major things happen by faith. Uh, Elder Ellington, she was just talking about some of the healings uh, that, that have taken place in Scripture. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the story where Jesus raises the paralytic to his feet. Uh, because the Bible says that this individual was born of four. But, but what I really like about the passage is that uh, 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 the text says that when Jesus saw their faith, he healed the man. Uh, and, and what that means is when he saw the faith of the individuals that brought him, that's when the healing came. So, so, so now at this point, uh, uh, we are seeking to pull our faith and our belief on behalf of Reggie, believing that God is able to do the miraculous in this place. I want to invite everybody to stand and reach their hands towards Brother Reggie as we lay our hands upon him in this moment. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. We come with our many needs. And this morning, I just want to present my own self before you, first of all. I'm asking you to search my heart and to remove every wicked way that is within me. I'm asking you, Lord, to rid me, my heart, my mind of every stumbling block in the way today. And give me and all your people standing in unison today the faith that we need today to bring about a healing in your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavenly Father, you know what is going on in his mind, in his heart, in his mouth, with his tongue. Lord, we are calling upon you today the God of all miracles, the God who, when you walk this earth in your son Jesus, performed many miracles. Lord, I remember your words telling us of the friends who brought their friend, the crippled, the paralytic, and even when there was no room that they could get in through the door, they climbed on the roof and they let him down because they had that much faith that if they climbed up there and let him down, you would be able to heal him. And so, Father, your people are standing here in unison today, invoking your presence. And we are asking you, Jesus, that if there is anything in any one of us that would create a roadblock to the flowing of your healing power, may you remove it today, Father. May you give each of us that faith to believe that your man's servant can be healed, that his tongue will be loosened, that the devil will take flight this morning. Heavenly Father, we call upon you, Jesus, to perform that miracle. Oh, Jesus, may your power be manifested today. Oh, Father, we present Reggie Jr. to you. If there is anything in his life, Jesus, that has created this, we are asking you to remove it. We are asking you to lay your hand upon him. That you will rebuke the devil, Heavenly Father. And that he will feel your power flowing through him. We are inviting your presence this morning, Father. May your power be manifested today. 
and lord if there is anyone else in this congregation that needs healing father god we are calling upon you we are asking you we are imploring you because you promise that if we ask you will give it and so we are asking for healing for your people today not only physical healing lord because we know that when you walk this earth there are so many who received the healing but there are many who did not and you know for whatever reason but father god we're also asking you today for a spiritual healing of our minds or bodies or souls because even above physical healing we know that there can be a lot of sensationalism when physical healing takes place but lord we are asking that your holy spirit fall upon us today and that our souls will be renewed father god we are asking that even as our pastor anoints ready with the oil of anointing that it will do a work in his life that you will equip him father to do the work that you have called him to do that you will loosen his tongue that you will release the power of the spirit within him we are asking this may your power flow through the pastor from his hands through the oil to reggie give us that faith to believe we thank you father for the work that you are going to do in his life in my life in our life as a congregation of temple of praise seventh day adventist church we need this power lord we need you please come into our lives come into our midst manifest yourself in us and through us and father we are not going to fail to give you all the praise the honor and the glory and father i just want to take this time to pray for your people those who are not able to come out but they are listening in may your holy spirit find them also and Lord I am laying my sister Jackie before you today Lord what can I tell you but that your people are under attack but through the power of the Holy Spirit Father we know our word your words tell us that Michael will stand for your people and today Lord we need him to stand up for us may your holy angels surround this congregation today bless us Lord bless our pastor may he bring the word that we need to hear today jesus we thank you thank you lord thank you jesus let the church say amen hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus for all that you're going to do for hearing and answering prayer thank you lord let the church say amen
nothing else happens today, that's enough. Uh, because the Bible says that his house shall be called a house of prayer uh, for all nations, which means our purpose when we come together. Uh, it is good to preach, uh, it's good to teach, and it's good to sing. Uh, but God said his house shall be called a house of prayer uh, for all nations. Uh, at this time, uh, I want to call those who are responsible uh, for bringing forth the, the tithe and the offering to, to come forward um, at this time uh, here at Temple of Praise. Uh, we've uh, learned to view stewardship uh, holistically. Uh, I like that word. Um, and as we have looked at stewardship, uh, we, we have broken it into five uh, categories, the five T's of stewardship, uh, which are time, talent, uh, temple, terrain, and treasure. Uh, on our prayer line each morning at 6 o'clock, uh, we've been looking at some, some tips about uh, how to uh, be well physically, uh, mentally, uh, and, and spiritually. Uh, and I want to bring forth uh, one of the tips today uh, that, that spoke of how you might be well mentally. Uh, and, and the tip was simple. It said to uh, take small steps. Uh, and, and what this means is uh, I, I know in your new year you've got uh, great uh, and grandiose plans. I, I know that you, you've got a vision of all the things that you want God uh, to do for you. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, when you are moving towards these goals, what they're advising is that you take small steps. And as you continue to take these small steps day by day and uh, brick by brick, they will add up and you will look back and see uh, that all that was set before you has been completed. Uh, I once had a conversation with my father and I, we were talking about goals and such. Uh, and, and we stopped in the middle of that conversation and he asked me, uh, Deacon Larry, he said, what's the fastest way uh, to eat an elephant? Uh, uh, I couldn't figure it out. And then he responded by telling me one bite at a time. We just want to take one bite at a time, step by step. Uh, we can get through this thing. Uh, and here we are, here are ways that we can give here at the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, the first of them being, you can go to www.adventistgiving.org. Type in the Temple of Praise uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. You can select uh, a local offering or, or the conference offering. You can give your tithe uh, and your offering there. Uh, you're also able to do this via Cash App or Cash Tag. Uh, is uh, dollar sign Temple of Praise SDA type within the subject line uh, how you intend to give and our, our treasurers will make sure it gets to the appropriate category. Uh, you're also able to mail it in, zail it in, or come visit us. We are the Temple of Praise Seventh Day Adventist Church. Uh, we're located at 1985 Green Road, Cleveland, Ohio. Our zip code is 44121. As always, we are thankful uh, for your benevolence and your sacrifice because without your gift, uh, no matter how small or how big, we would not be able to carry on without your love and your care. Uh, we can go ahead and pick it up and receive it at this time.
Amen. The Bible says, give and it will be given unto you. And good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured back unto you. Uh, shall we pray? Our Father and our God, uh, Lord, we thank you that your hands have been upon us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, the monetary blessings and increases that you have provided in our lives. Uh, but even beyond these things, Lord, we thank you uh, for the physical wellness that we have, uh, as well as the mental acuity that we have in this moment. Uh, Lord, for we know that if we were not able to walk inside of this building today, Lord, if our minds were not in the right condition, if we were not clothed in our right minds, we would not be able to return unto you in the first place. So, Lord, we thank you for what you have done and the fact that you have kept the light on, that you have kept a roof over our heads and put food in the refrigerator. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we still have cars to drive and clothes to put on our back. But, but beyond all of these things, Lord, we thank you that we have the awareness and the ability to continue to do it. Lord, we thank you for this increase, and we ask that you would do uh, what you can do only, Lord, and that you would take it, that you would multiply it, that you would bless your people with it. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, and let every believer say amen. amen. Let us remain standing for our scripture reading. Happy Sabbath Church. Our scripture reading today is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Once again, that's Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And it says, Now the serpent was made more substill than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, or you will die. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does that in the, excuse me, thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be God's, knowing good and evil. And then the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that the pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desired to make wise. She took the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and he knew that they were naked. And they sewed figs, leaves together, and made themselves aprons. May God add a rich blessing to his word. Please be seated.
wonderful because he he woke me up this morning and uh, he put a rhythm in my heart and a wave in my brain there is blood flowing through my veins today that's why I'm able to stand here and testify that the Lord is mighty that he is wonderful that he is excellent I don't have enough aliases and appellations to give him today uh, but I know you ought to open up your mouth and give him some praise on today uh, for the Bible says let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord uh, that means if he woke you up today and you got the ability to inhale and exhale uh, then that means you got something to praise him about already I don't need to wait for a breakthrough my breakthrough is the fact that I got out of the bed this morning I wish somebody would give him glory in this place uh, give him honor uh, because he is truly worthy to be praised yes I've been blessed I've been blessed by our choir today I'm so thankful. go and put your hands together one more time for our choir uh, for our minister uh, of music and uh, uh, for Minister Levy as well, who is blessing us on this organ and with this arrangement uh, today. Uh, now, as always, I come before you in the name of Yahweh, uh, for his name alone is excellent and his glory uh, is above the earth and the heavens. Uh, all power and authority has he granted unto his son, Yeshua, uh, whom we call Jesus. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we will exalt him today. Uh, therefore, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. Uh, greetings to each of you who I haven't had the privilege of meeting. My name is Renee Cannon, uh, and I'm the pastor here of the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church and proud to be called so. Uh, I am husband to one Dr. Afia Cannon. I'm father uh, to Ryan and Corey Cannon, who is coming to us uh, uh, by March the 20th. We thank you for your prayers. Uh, we got a little boy. He's going to be tearing some stuff up. 
uh, when he get around. I'm, I'm excited about it, and our church is, is, is growing with the babies when I look around, and I got a, a pleasant announcement. The children's story is coming back on next week, so we are excited. Amen. Uh, to have that and for all that God is doing here at Temple of Praise. I can just feel uh, the momentum in the, the atmosphere here. Uh, now, what we've been doing here uh, at Temple of Praise is we decided uh, that for the entire year we're preaching uh, from the book of Genesis. Genesis is our thematic book uh, for the entire year. So I want to invite you now to open your Bibles back again uh, to the very first book of the Bible, uh, which is Genesis, and turn with me to the third page therein. I thank uh, Brother Tashon York, York uh, for, for coming through and uh, uh, setting us up uh, with the preliminary reading. I just want to take us the rest of the way uh, with these verses I want you to consider. Let us go to Genesis chapter 3, and we want to consider verses 15 and 16. Once you found those two verses... I want to ask that you would indicate it by standing uh, to your feet in honor and in reverence of God's holy word. If you are able, I'm asking that you would rest upon your feet with me. Our media team has done a wonderful job of supplying this text also upon our screen today. Genesis chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. If you are able, I'm asking that you would stand with me today. Uh, the Bible says this. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel. Uh, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Uh, in sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over thee. Uh, I want to invite you now to turn your Bibles also to Genesis chapter 12. Uh, in, in verse 3. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, it is on the screen uh, before us. I would like for us to recite this in unison. This is a thematic text for the year. Genesis 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Uh, and today I want to lift up the title and topic, Nobody Wins when the family feuds. Nobody wins when the family feuds. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Nobody wins when the family feuds. Uh, in 2016, uh, pop singer Beyonce uh, released her sixth studio album, which was entitled Lemonade. Uh, this critically acclaimed work which was named the album of the decade by the Associated Press, became the topic of national discourse due to some of the spicy, uh, uh, scandalous, or salacious subjects that it dealt with. Uh, chief amongst them was the infidelity that was practiced in her marriage with the rap artist Jay-Z. Uh, on the album, Beyonce intimated that Jay-Z had an affair with a woman that was given the pseudonym Becky with the good hair. Uh, and the disclosure of this adulterous relationship illuminated the reason behind the tension that the couple had been going through under the observation of the public eye. Uh, in one such incident, cameras recorded Jay-Z, Beyonce, and her sister Solange on an elevator together when Solange suddenly launched into a physical attack against Jay-Z. Uh, many entertainment bloggers that covered this incident stated that the reason behind this fight was an encounter Beyonce had with the woman that Jay-Z was rumored to be cheating on her with. Uh, and these rumors of adultery were later confirmed by Jay-Z on his album, 444, where he confessed to his betrayal of the marital vow in a song that was aptly titled, Nobody Wins When the Family Feuds. Uh, and in this song, he not only acknowledged that he cheated on his wife, but he spoke about how his actions had negatively affected his entire family. Uh, for his cheating put a strain on his relationship with his wife. It led to the 
embarrassing scene on the elevator with his sister-in-law and it jeopardized his familial stability of his children. Thus, one moment of illicit passion in Jay-Z's life uh, could have been the torpedo that completely destroyed and sank all of his most important relationships. And understanding his views about the pain that he caused in the marriage, I also have come to the conclusion that it's true that nobody wins when the family feuds. And this is the reason that when God created the first man and woman and joined them together in marriage, that he also fortified them with unity. Uh, we can see this unity expressed in the first two chapters of the book of Genesis. Uh, for in Genesis 1 verses 26 through 28, the Bible says that when God created the man and the woman, that he made them both in his image. Uh, and together they were given dominion or power over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over the entirety of the earth, as well as everything that crept upon it. And one thing that is missed when we read these verses is that it took both the male and the female to properly replicate the image of God. And therefore, the power that is tied to his image could only be experienced when the male and female were united. This is when we are able to to exercise dominion over the entire earth. Uh, Genesis 2 continues this unification motif. For there the Bible lets us know that the woman was literally created from the rib of the man, uh, which means that they were not only united in their anatomical structure, but in their genetic makeup as well. Uh, and after God had created the woman and Adam saw her for the first time, uh, the Bible declares that Adam burst out with the first poem that was ever uttered in human history. Uh, for if you were to look at Genesis 2 in verse 23, Adam declared, declared this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man and the following verse verse 24 lets us know that this poem served as the basis for the theological concept of married people being considered one flesh uh, now, when many people hear this idea of the two becoming one flesh, their minds are generally led straight to the bed sheets. Um, however, the idea of being one flesh is something that is much greater than the activity of sexual relations. For in all actuality, what the idea of one flesh is actually describing is the sentiment that two people are now operating as one. Uh, listen to me today. That means that whenever one individual individual hurts that other individual is also hurt and whatever helps one of them it also helps the other and this is the reason that in Ephesians chapter 5 Paul instructed the husbands to love their wives as their own bodies for he says that no one has ever hated his own flesh but nourishes it and cherishes it and understanding this it means that when we are one flesh we are so united that we operate with another person as if if we are one individual and this is the unity that Adam and Eve enjoyed in the beginning and as a biblical principle because the two were unified there was much power in their marriage uh, how many folk know that there is power in unity on today um we can see this power being displayed of unity in Genesis chapter 11 for there the Bible tells us that the Shinarites were of one language of one speech and of one mind for they were unified in their mission to build a city and a tower whose top reached into heaven. And the Bible tells us that when the Lord saw this, he came down from heaven and said, Behold, the people is one, and they are of one language, and therefore there is nothing that they will be restrained from doing. And in order to nullify the power that they had, God had to scatter them and confuse their languages, and he had to do this because there is power power in unity. Uh, we can also see this power being displayed in Acts chapter 2. Uh, for the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples were all together with one accord and in one place, that the Holy Spirit 
fell afresh upon them and they preached the gospel with power and uh, so much so that 3,000 were baptized in a day and it happened because there is power in unity this is the reason that Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 through 12 declares that two are better than one and a threefold cord is not easily broken and all of these examples let us know that there is strength there is protection and there is power in the unity of the family um that's why i've got respect for the kardashians um and you can call them talentless culture vultures or whatever you want to call them and i might not argue with you um but one thing i won't let you say is that the kardashians aren't unified um and their family's unity is part of the reason that they are able to be so prosperous um, and what we need in the kingdom of god is unity amongst the families um we need husbands and wives that are moving like they are one flesh um we need parents and children that are united with the same vision we need sisters and brothers that love one another we need a church that doesn't just call people family but actually functions like one and when we begin to act unified that's when we will experience the fullness of the power that god has for us because there is power in unity the bible tells us that adam and eve were unified and it's because of their unified a uh, unity rather that the devil was motivated to take them down um, uh, how many of you you know today the, that when you're fragmented um, the devil doesn't have much interest um, but as soon as you start coming together for the cause of Christ that's when the devil starts getting busy um that's the reason that some of you uh, are already going through hell in 2023 because your family has already declared that this is the year that that you're coming after everything that the Lord has for you. And it's when the devil saw that you were unified in purpose that he started getting busy. Am I speaking to anybody today? It was when the devil saw the unity of Adam and Eve that he became determined to destroy them. Now, watch this. In order to break down this family, what the devil first wanted to do was decrease their confidence in God's word. Uh, for the Bible lets us know that once God created Adam and Eve, he moved them eastward to the paradisiacal garden of Eden. And once they were there in Eden, the Lord commanded them, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die and now it was the devil's desire to get them to disobey this law for he knew that if they disobeyed God uh, all that they had been blessed with would be lost and this loss might cause them to abandon their God that's why he was plotting against them uh, however even though he was plotting his attack uh, he knew that he could not approach them head on because they had been fortified by their unity therefore instead of approaching them directly Satan decided to employ a tactic called divide and conquer uh, this divide and conquer strategy is a plan that attempts to defeat a strong enemy by fomenting or exploiting existing divisions amongst its ranks uh, and if you're successful in causing your enemy to splinter or come become divided then instead of fighting against one strong unit, you will only need to defeat multiple smaller fractured and weakened units. Uh, this was a tactic that was used in American slavery. Um, for the slave masters pitted the light African against the dark one, uh, the house Negro against the field, the male against the female, and the impoverished whites against them all. And as the result of the divide and conquer strategy, uh, 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 that these groups were too busy fighting one another to realized that the real enemy was whooping them all and we still see this divide and conquer technique being used against us by the elites uh, for, 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 for the poor whites are still against blacks and vice versa the Caribbeans are against the African American the African American is against the African and so on and so forth and because we are all against one another we are not able to come together and build as a nation because we have been divided and conquered by the enemy and it is this divide and conquer technique that the devil was going to use on Adam and Eve. 
Uh, in fact, Ellen White alludes to this strategy in the book Great Controversy, where she writes that in the garden, the angels caution not Eve not to separate from her husband, for she might be brought into contact with this fallen foe. And if separated from each other, they would be in greater danger than if both were together. And what we are able to derive from this reading in conjunction with the text is that at some point in the garden, Adam and Eve were separate from one another. And Satan, then clothed in the flesh of the serpent, uh, seized the opportunity to divide this family. Uh, in fact, if you read Genesis 3, verses 1 through 5, the Bible says that Satan entered into a conversation with the woman and asked her if God said that she should not eat of every tree that was in the garden. Uh, and this is what I want you to pay attention to, because instead of shutting it down, the Bible says that Eve opened up her mouth and started responding to the snake. Um, and what I want you to see is that's when you know you've lost some, um, when you begin a debate with the devil about the subject subject of God's words. Um, I know many of you look down your nose at Eve right now, um, but she ain't the only one that's ever debated with the devil. Um, for some of you are listening to the devil talking about, did God really say, don't cheat on your taxes? Um, did God really say, bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you? Um, did God really say uh, that we they will know we are his disciples if we love one another? Some of us are looking for loopholes in God's law. That's why we actually enjoy debating with the devil Eve debated with the devil and she responded to the serpent by saying to him uh, look no, no he, didn't, he didn't say that he said we can eat of the trees um, in the garden it's just the one that is in the midst we can't eat of for God has said that if we eat of it or touch it then we shall surely die uh, and the serpent, knowing that he had her on the hook at this time, uh, said to her, you shall not surely die. But watch this. God knows that in the day you eat thereof, you will be like God's, knowing both good and evil. And when you read verse 6, the Bible says that when, when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant for the eyes, that she took of the fruit and ate and she gave it to her husband who ate too. Uh, now, we don't know what type of fruit that it was, um, but I imagine that it was something something like a mango. Um, and I would say that because Elder Ellington told me some time ago that in Jamaica they have mangoes so good and juicy um, that when you bite into it the juice starts running all down your arms. Um, this is how good I imagine that the fruit from the tree tasted uh, when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, uh, however, while eating the fruit might have tasted and felt good for a moment like sin generally does, eventually the high that they experienced in that moment began to wear off um, and it became painfully clear what woefully awful thing they had just done uh, for the Bible says um, that their eyes were open and both of them knew that they were naked and now being covered in shame alone they sought to dress themselves in fig leaves and hide from the presence of the Lord if I might parenthetically park this thing today that's what sin does to your brain uh, it makes you begin to imagine something so foolish that you could hide yourself from an omnipresent God. Uh, uh, you are trying to hide your lack of attendance at church behind your dissatisfaction with one of the members. Um, you're trying to hide your lack of faithfulness behind situational atheism and agnosticism. You're trying to hide behind your degrees, behind your job, and behind your anger. But there is nowhere you can go, uh, neither literally or figuratively, to hide from the Lord. Um, that's why in the 139th division of the Psalms um, David says um, where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence um, if I ascend into the heaven uh, you are there if I make my bed in hell behold you are there if I take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea my God you are still there for it is not possible to flee from the presence of the Lord Adam and Eve tried to hide themselves from God's presence, but as you already know, God found them anyway. Uh, and once God found Adam and Eve, he began to hold them accountable for what they had done. Uh, and if you were to read from verses 14 through 19, uh, you would find all of the curses that he gave to the serpent, to the man uh, and the woman. You'd read how the serpent was made lower than any beast of the field, how the woman would bring forth children in pain, how the man would now eat from the sweat of his brow and how they'd all die in return 
down to the dust one day. Uh, however, despite all that is happening, the element that gets my attention is section C of verse 16. Uh, for there God says to the woman that your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Now, unfortunately... Many Western theologians throughout history have misinterpreted this text uh, in a way that becomes harmful to the family. For instead of rightly seeing what has happened as a curse, uh, they believe that this verse yields two positives for the male of the species. Um, the first of them being that the woman's supposed desire for her man um, was something that was sensual and to behold. And, and secondly, the fact uh, that he would rule over her. I don't need any man saying amen at this point in time. Uh, however, what this verse is actually saying to us is that as a result of their sin, the, the first family would be cursed with the erosion of the marital unit unity, and in its place there will be a burning impulse to dominate and control one another. Uh, I say this because the word desire used in the text was not speaking of something sensual, but instead the Hebrew word for desire was used in literature to depict a predator animal that was ready to devour its prey. A further proof that this language is used for domination can be seen in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh, for here we find an identical syntactical construct to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh, for here God was explaining the danger of sin to Cain and he said to him, watch this, if you don't do well, then sin lies at the door. This is the part I need you to pay attention to. And unto you shall be his desire and you shall rule over him. Here in this text, sin is said to have the same desire that the woman had for the man. And we know that sin does not yearn to love on you, um, but sin wants to steal your joy. It wants to rob you of your peace, um, and it wants to kill your faith. Um, and that's why the text says that sin's desire will be for you, but you should rule over it, which means that you should learn to dominate or crush the sin that appears before your life. Um, and therefore, when you understand this, um, you can see see that the text is telling us that just like we wage war against sinful proclivities so would the man and the woman be in a constant battle to dominate one another I hope you see it today and what makes this situation even more tragic is that Romans 5 and 12 tells us that through one man's sin entered into the world and then it spread to all of humankind, uh, which means that each of us have inherited the dysfunction of Adam and Eve. Um, this is the reason that many of us are broken individuals um, because we've been brought up in broken homes. Um, we've had periods in our marriages um, where the love that others see in the public um, uh, isn't present in the private. Um, we've had relationships with our siblings um, in which anything but brotherly or sisterly love was shown. Uh, there are parents that are not on speaking terms with their children and children that are currently disrespecting their parents. Um, there are people with in-laws that wish they had been outlawed. Um, there are churches that are free of fellowship um, because just like Adam and Eve had a broken family, we understand what it's like to come up in broken families. Uh, however, even though the family dynam dynamic was going to be strained, uh, I'm thankful for the fact that God is able to put broken families back together. Hmm. Uh, and the Bible tells us that the way he was going to put this family back together is he was going to allow a child to be born unto them. Uh, we see this in verse 15, where God says to the woman, I will put enmity but to the serpent rather he said I will put enmity between you and the woman uh, between your seed and her seed and it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel and here God was saying that despite of the problems they would have God was going to bring Adam and Eve back together and they would produce a son that would destroy the serpent that had caused them so much pain. 
Uh, now, I know some of you are hearing this and you are thinking to yourselves that having a child is no way to fix broken marriages. Amen, somebody. Uh, I know you're hearing me and thinking that introducing a child into a broken family will only make the parents problems worse. Um, however, there is a difference in the child this this marriage would produce um, in comparison to other children. Uh, for every other child is conceived of the flesh, um, but this child will be conceived of the Holy Ghost. Um, every other child child has a birth certificate um, with a man listed as the father but this child's birth certificate says um, that he is the son of God. Um, every other child is known for their mischief um, but this child will save his people from their sins. Um, uh, every other child uh, is given his name by their parents um, but this child was given his name by an angel. Uh, uh, it is a name that is above all names. Um, it is a name that brings power when proclaimed. Um, it is a name that will cause every knee and bow and tongue confess uh, and his name is called Jesus um, and the Bible tells us that in him uh, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Um, the Bible says um, that he'll turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children back to their parents. Um, he can take a broken and fragmented marriage um, and make you one flesh again. Um, he can take a sibling rivalry um, and turn it into sibling unity uh, and I know it um, because he he reconciled Joseph with his brothers um, that had thrown him in a ditch. Um, he made Esau hug Jacob um, instead of killing him like he vowed. Um, he brought the prodigal son back home uh, and he even put Adam and Eve back together. Um, and if he fixed these families, um, then I stop by to tell you today um, that he's able to do the same thing for you. Um, and I know he will um, because in the book of Revelation, um, the Bible speaks of a heavenly family reunion. Uh, and the Bible says um, that those who have gotten the victory um, will stand on the sea of glass with harps in their hands um, and they'll sing the song of Moses and they'll sing the song of the Lamb uh, but if I can use my sanctified imagination today, um, once they're done singing those songs, um, they're going to sing one more song uh, and y'all know the lyrics um, the song says he is a burden bearer uh, and a heavy load sharer um, he is a bridge over water he's a doctor and a lawyer um, he's a friend to the friendless and a mother to the motherless. Um, he's bread when you're hungry and he's comfort when you're lonely. And as long as I got King Jesus, um, I don't need nobody else. Um, I wish somebody would give him glory in this place um, because God is able to take your family and, and put it back together. Yeah, you may have come from brokenness, uh, but we serve a God who is the potter um, and is able to put the pieces back together again. Does anybody believe on Jesus today? As we move throughout this year in our series, uh, one of the things that it is important that it is pertinent to note in each of these chapters is, is God is dealing not with perfect individuals and perfect families. The story of Genesis is God using these flawed people, these flawed families to bring about a perfect seed. And we're going to see it over and over and over again. And if God can work with these families and with as much stuff that they've got going on, then surely he can work with you and me. You believe the word of God, I invite you to stand to your feet. Today. God is able to put your family back together if you trust on him and you continue to lean on his word. Don't allow a serpent to, 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 to slither its way inside of your family and cause division amongst you, but steadily trust in God's holy word. Uh, and I'm promising you today, God is able to mend and put families back together. All heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I make the appeal for the individual today that has heard the word and you know the brokenness of your own family and your own situation. Uh, but today you have determined uh, that I'm not going to be a part of this problem anymore. Uh, but today I'm making a determination that I'm going to be a part of the solution. And the way I'm going to be a part of the solution is I'm going to trust God's holy word and I'm going to love the people that God has placed in my life to love 
today you are saying this is the end uh, of that brokenness today you are saying i'm here to reconcile with my brother or my sister i'm here to make it right uh, with my children or with my parents i invite you to raise your hand today you want to be that individual today all it takes is one individual amen to begin to make that step today and, and what i'm saying to you today is that you not only raise your hand uh, uh, but but in this 31 days of prayer we we have talked about this step of connecting with others so i'm encouraging you also today if you are raising your hand that you would make that connection and the first step of making this thing right Secondly, I make the appeal to the individual that is here. You've heard the word of God. You've heard uh, about this seed that is going to come uh, and eventually make all these things right. Uh, you want to go to the Eden made anew when Jesus returns. And uh, uh, you're just here to rededicate yourself onto Christ today. You've heard the word of God. You're here to re re rededicate and recommit. I'm asking that you would raise your hand in the house of the Lord. We see you today. We see you. Amen. We see you. We see you. We see you. And also, we've got a baptism that's coming up on February the 4th. It's not too late for you to be a part of that. You feel today that God is moving on your heart that you would be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You want this to be uh, your community of faith. You, you, you want this to be your mission base. You want to be a part of the Temple of Praise Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you want to join by baptism. I'm asking that you would raise your hand. God is calling you to be baptized. Amen. I see you today. I see you today is that another in the house of the Lord. God is calling for you to be baptized on today. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, I thank you for the love that you have shown uh, to our families, Lord. Uh, even us as uh, flawed individuals, Lord, had you have put us uh, uh, and encircled us around people that, that love and that care for us. Uh, God, today I'm asking that you would help us to be uh, proper representatives of your name, uh, that we would bring your love back to the family. Lord, I'm, I'm praying now uh, for the softening of hearts all over this church, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, for every uh, bit of bitterness, Lord, that is here that prevents reconciliation, Lord, I'm asking that you would melt the heart of stone, Lord, and turn it into flesh today. Uh, Lord, I'm asking that you would make your people willing to reach out to those individuals who, who they haven't uh, talked to. And Lord, on the other end of those phone lines, at the other end of that door, that they would find somebody that is ready and receptive to the love uh, that you are, uh, are, are placing in your servant at this time. Lord, we know that you are able because what you've done uh, with others in the past. Lord, what you did for Adam and Eve and uh, uh, what you have done for, for Jacob and Esau, Joseph and his brothers, and for every individual in here that has come from a fractured and broken family that you have put together. Lord, I'm asking that you would work this same miracle in your people today. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus we pray and let the people of God say amen, amen. and amen. Let us remain standing in benediction. Uh, the Bible says in Jude uh, 24 and 25, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And let the people of God say amen and come on and put your hands together and bless them one more time.